here is an artist who in fact died too young, but who was dealing with those things that don't die. Love, the dance with color, and the intersection between seeming opposites. The form in which it was her time to pass was not an easy one. And yet you can see by what she left behind that she was not ever bitter about it. I'm Rebecca Alban Hofberger, and I'm a founder and director here at the American Visionary Art Museum. And I had the great privilege of knowing uh, Gretchen Feldman and her husband, Sam, and always was aware of her uh, grassroots, Mother Earth kind of quality, and that she loved nature. This exhibition is uniquely her vision. It's called Gretchen Feldman Love Letter to Earth because she loved the garden so, so much. When you know someone, you're really in what they care most. This is the distillation of, of what their life meant. Her artwork is about where seeming opposites come together. It's where, you know, heaven, the skies kiss the earth where water and land come together. She repeated these themes in this almost um, luminescent mode of painting. I looked at over 2,000 works of art and I wanted to have some from her early experimentation. And then when I found uh, Gretchen's childhood work and realized the orbs were something that she began with and that she finished with. I knew I wanted her real physical easel because she had spent so much time on it and there was also the very last painting already propped on it. So uh, it was important for me to bring that as a sculptural piece. Just about everything she did was either acrylics, watercolors, watercolors are very prominent, oil pastels, colored pencils sometimes to begin. She worked them to such an intensity that the colors really uh, saturated, saturated into the paper. Trained artists and untrained, the best of them use that intuition. They don't just copy the masters, you know? Their art is, is really a language for them and just one of the ways in which they're creative. And that was certainly true for Gretchen. It was her own sensibility, not that of someone else, that brought her to make the work she did. Her joy was such that even when she got the horrific news that it was lung cancer, her first drawing is this hot pink and purple, and it's called Bad News. Even in Bad News, look how her colors still stay so radiant, you know? As you come into this exhibition, you are met with a beautiful quote from Steve Jobs about the nature of our mortality and that not being a downer, but actually a liberating factor. Then you come in around the corner in the introduction, it goes through just giving a sketch of her life along with her heart-shaped rocks. And then it goes into the work she first did as a child, as a schoolgirl, with her orbs of color. And on the same wall, it goes to what she was doing at the very end. Uh, the orbs of the cancer cells that she was so desperately trying to really understand. And then we have the uh, pairing of perfect unions, which I believe is at the core of Gretchen's work. There's a column of her rooster and then her love of her sheep that were out the door and other um, kind of snapshots of life amongst nature. And then we come around to the quote from Vincent van Gogh, and of course the uh, house, the lone house, disappearing more and more into the field, and then finishing with the guest house, probably the most perfect therapeutic poem ever written. The uh, reception of this show has been far greater than I could ever imagine. Young people, as well as older, not having known her, have been asking for postcards, is there a book? It's very interesting. So I think they respond above all to the colors and the luminosity uh, and the radiance. And that's a really good word to describe uh, not only her work, but her presence.